to start with a subject that I will confess I don't know much about, but I know it's important. I have not read Fifty Shades of Grey. I have no intention of seeing the movie. I barely read anything about it. But you're wearing it. it. But I wear it. <laughs> well, one shade. <laughs> one shade of grey. Um, <laughs> so what's so important about this? Why has this been the subject of so many, not just sort of purient kind of stories, but like heavy think pieces? Nama, do you have any ideas? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, what's behind all of the criticism and all of the discussion is the fact that women, since this book have co has come out, are embracing their sexuality in an incredibly public way. And the world seems to be coming around to it. So for instance, I was at Target with my kids and I saw um, a blindfold, a Fifty Shades of Grey blindfold for sale in the drugstore part of Target. And I think that there's just a discussion about women's bodies and women's sexuality in a way that I think is, act is very refreshing, actually. Whether you're interested in BDSM or not, the fact that we have bodies, we like to feel good in our bodies is a really important conversation, and I think that's what's driving this. I, I gotta be honest with you, I, I find the connection of violence and sex to be abhorrent and, and not in women's best interests at all. I mean, maybe I'm just right. being a prude, but that's really my feeling. But the truth of the matter is, I think something like Fifty Shades of Grey, having written my own piece on years ago for the New Yorker about maybe something you would find abhorrent, I don't know, it was about erotic spanking called Unlikely Obsession. I think you can't dictate women's fantasy lives. I think Fifty Shades of Grey speaks more to fantasy than it does to most women's actual sex lives. And fantasies aren't politically correct. I mean, it's sort of, I think it's morally conscientious to say you abhor um, violence and sex, but they're not that af apart from each other for many, for many people. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have a fascination with Fifty Shades of Grey or serial killers. There's a lot of perversion and distortion and contortion out in the world. I'm going to draw the line between Fifty Shades of Grey and serial killing only because there's, um, there's an element of consent involved in Fifty Shades of Grey and in BDSM. No, but it's a, it's a, but, it's a um, continuum. There's, there's certainly there's a continuum. fascination, but um, I think that the, the sort of the element of consent and acknowledgement of a spectrum of interest is what's important and what's, uh, and, you know, and the reason that this is driving conversation right now is because it's very unusual to talk about that with respect to women. And, you know, women's bodies, pleasures, ability to, you know, have orgasms, what they like, like those, those are things that are taboo. I hesitated for a moment about saying the word orgasms on the Jewish channel. It might be the first time it's been said. The thing, you know, it's interesting. I did not read the book, but I did. I'm on a film tour right now, and I happen to find myself in theaters many a day where I'm waiting for my film to end, so I go into other films. So I went in and watched 45 minutes of Fifty Shades of Grey, and I was really surprised because I didn't really, I just thought it was about the two of them having a lot of S and M, and in reality, it's actually about them kind of not having right. S and M. It's about the tease of it. It's about. Oh, I guess I shouldn't say what happens in the end. <laughs> These people no, haven't no, seen no, it. Don't no, spoil it. it. You Nobody's know, read it. <laughs> spoilers, right? <laughs> Nobody's seen, read or seen it. But you know, so I thought that was really interesting to me. That it's actually, it kind of goes back to your point, I think. And I really don't think because it is not actually the violence because there's really no violence happening.